So it's kind of hard to segment rideshare news from what's going on in the world. Hey, what's up guys? And thank you for tuning back in to This Week in Rideshare News. But there's been a lot that went on this week. So it's kind of hard to segment rideshare news from what's going on in the world. First, uh, there being uh, the tragedy that happened early this week with Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and several other families that were affected by that tragedy. And to be honest with you, I was surprised to find out that many people found out about the tragedy while being in an Uber or coming in contact with an Uber or a Lyft driver. A lot of folks actually found out about what happened via rideshare. And so it's hard to segment what's going on in real life from, uh, you know, what's happening in your car. And so I'm sure many of you that are on the road that are carrying folks back and forth have had conversations. <laughs> How those conversations are going? I mean, for the most part, people were saying that they had great experiences talking to their drivers. Uh, drivers were sharing stories, fond memories and things like that, consoling others and that sort of thing. And I uh, just want to note that with any sort of wide scale tr tragedy, it is your car and you can do whatever you want to do. But I think always just try to be sensitive to how other people are grieving. Especially here in Los Angeles, people really did idolize and look up to him. He feels very much like a part of the city. He feels very much like someone that everyone has a story or a very fond feeling for. And so be mindful that you could uh, trigger someone uh, if you respond in a way that might be deemed insensitive or uh, engage in a conversation or something like that where most likely you might end up in having a difference of opinion and I'm sure you can fill in the blank. So with that being said, um, I read a few really awesome tweets and I just wanted to share them with you guys. Aside from that tragic loss, we also have another story. There's another elephant in the room and that would be the coronavirus. With this particular strain being so new and people knowing very little about the disease, like how people get it and the possibility of transmission, uh, folks' imagination and ignorance has run wild. And my heart goes out to my Asian sister and brethren because I'm thinking y'all are probably having a real hard time, at least some of you, after I was looking online. There's no shortage of jokes. Folks are coughing and sneezing. My driver sneezed, he might have the virus. You know, those jokes are plentiful. The problem I have is that I'm really concerned about those Asian drivers that said that they've been discriminated against, um, they report cancellations, racist jokes, and inappropriate questions. There's also some Asian customers that said that they've been treated the same way, and that folks who have what would be deemed Asian names or looked Asian said that their drivers were actually happy to know that they weren't Asian because they were afraid of the coronavirus. Now, airport passengers have experienced longer wait times because drivers are reluctant to do airport pickups. How does Uber and Lyft feel about this? Uber support, Uber has not responded at all to all of these jokes and things being said. Lyft did, and this is what they said. <sighs> Bottom line, I feel like most of the things I see out there are really just people who are afraid, who lack the cultural sensitivity and ignorance can be a great motivator in doing and saying dumb things. The internet is accessible for people who don't have the answer. So I feel like if you were listening to the news, if you are curious about the disease, how it spreads, who has it, and that kind of thing, if you have questions, go there. Do not think that you can just turn to someone and ask them about their food, if they've been exposed to the virus, and that sort of thing. One other thing that I found, which I thought was interesting, I'm not sure if this video is real or not, but it appears to be a driver who's in a suit, who's on the road hoping to make some money um, and avoid catching the coronavirus. Uh, I saw somewhere that this isn't the right kind of suit um, to keep from getting the virus, but how do we know? Like, it's not like we looked at the tag or something like that, but apparently this is a real video and it's been shared over and over and over again. And that's always my thing. Like, if, <laughs> if a virus is spreading, it's going to spread in your car. Rideshare is going to speed up the transport of 
virus. It's true. It's, it's not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be afraid, but the reality is, is um, unless you are in the area, an area of quarantine, you really shouldn't have to worry about it. I'm no doctor. I'm not telling you how to feel, but I definitely feel like uh, good hygiene is always important. Spraying your car down um, and that sort of thing. One second. This Lysol kills SARS, whooping cough, rotavirus, salmonella, duck hepatitis B. I didn't even know ducks could get hepatitis B. But this right here kills mostly everything. So having some of this is important in your car. An Uber driver receives a check from a local church after being scammed by online con men. Uh, these guys said that they were Uber security and they contacted Ms. Don Howell and uh, she shared her information and her earnings were stolen that fast. She lost $112. She contacted her local news and they shared the story. A pastor saw this broadcast and he wanted to assist. You okay with us? We made the check out for a little bit more because we knew that you're going to have to go to the bank and change oh. your accounts and everything. So awesome. I, I made it out for 150 just to oh, cover some of your you. other expenses too. And I I don't know what to say. I am just, the act of kindness is just, the, I'm humbled by it. The church gave Dawn $150 to cover her loss. Now I know these stories are commonplace, but people fall for these scams all the time, so they need to keep sharing it. Now just know that if anyone claims to work for Uber or Lyft or any sort of platform, they already have access to your account. They don't need you to provide access, especially if the this communication is unsolicited, okay? So, um, <laughs> and when has their support ever been that attentive, huh? Anyway, long story short, uh, if someone reaches out to you, ask you for your information, don't give it to them. Um, the money that you lose, you may not receive back. So it's worth being cautious and waiting and then reaching out support to support via the app or the number that you know for sure goes to that particular app support and asking if someone's trying to get in contact with you for what and why. Okay, so you guys can probably guess what today's segment's going to be about with What Would You Do? I saw this online. I'm going to read it to you right now. Anyone else considering using face masks and gloves while driving because of the new virus? You think it will weird out packs? I'm mostly worried about getting my one-year-old sick. I think it's interesting how we're all focusing on one virus when clearly there are several. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> There's tons of viruses. Let me just say this. I don't want to catch your common cold. I don't want to catch your flu. I don't want to catch your viral infection. I don't want to catch your whooping cough. I don't want to catch your anything. I don't want to catch any of it. And so, um, I feel like if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Uh, I mean, you need to educate yourself on the type of mask and what because not all masks are created equal and you need a special mask for the coronavirus if you're trying to prevent that. Let me tell you the, you know, the flu can possibly kill you. A common cold can turn into pneumonia. It just kind of weird how people just, you know, everybody just gets so, we just lose all common sense <laughs> with these scares and um there's plenty of people that die from the flu and all kinds of stuff so yeah i don't want any sort of thing that you have and so i feel like if you want to protect yourself with gloves and masks and lysol then you should i think you should uh it's gonna freak somebody out it's gonna definitely cause a conversation and be ready for the conversation if you think that you can dress up like that and that no one's gonna ask a question then you're fooling yourself. So I would say do it and do it with a playful and open mind and attitude because people are going to be taken aback. Um, being a, that I'm a person who has asthma and allergies, I'm always having a respiratory issue. I'm letting people know constantly <clears throat> when I do that, I've got asthma, hey, I've got allergies, that sort of thing, just so they, they don't think that I 
got out, you know, got into their car sick or stuff like that. It's just common courtesy, at least here in America. I'm not speaking for anybody else, and I'm not inferring that anyone else does it. I just don't have that that knowledge. Here, you cough, you cover your mouth, you sneeze, you try to cover it. And I think it's courteous to let people know if you do are sick or not. So, if you want to wear it, I say wear it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate you guys for hanging in there with me. You can watch my videos every single Saturday. So, they go up as early as 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But you can watch it whenever you want to because that's what we're doing right now. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you watched it, then you're like, okay, that was good. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. There's lots of good things here. Lots of great stuff. Look forward to seeing you again next Saturday. Peace out. Oh, and if you're curious about who I am and what I do, my name is Cecily and I have a channel called Drive Girl Drive and you can contact me, contact me via my Facebook as well. Bye.